If there's one thing I've tried to impart on the channel, it's the importance of maintaining a positive mindset when things aren't going our way. You're having me think about flirting with that line. But it's one thing to say that, and another to put it into practice. So today I want to show you the number one method I use to consistently break 80. Okay, over the trap with a cut, basically. I mean, left of the trap. <laughs> and to demonstrate it, I'm actually going to show you today's round out of sequence here at Royal Canapalli. So 92 playing 97. I'm going to back off a pitching wedge. Oh, I chunked it. It's got to hop up there. No. Oh, and it's going to come all the way down the hill. It's going to lose about 50 yards or so. My approach doesn't quite reach the green here, and I'm left with an awkward uphill pitch. I get it on, and now the plan is to two-putt for bogey. Oh. oh, look at that ball. Wow, that ball was an inch from the hook. Then I miss this, and from out of nowhere, we find a double bogey. 440 and right into it. Double bogeys are indeed score killers, and my first double at Royal Canapalli was followed by stroke hole one, where I actually hit a great drive that unfortunately winds up plugged in a fairway bunker. If this goes 20 yards, I'd be thrilled. Okay, we're out. I still have 200 yards left into wind, and once again, a good strike leads to a bad outcome. This is why I don't bog myself down thinking about my score on each hole. I stay focused over each and every shot, even when I miss bogey putts. Boy, a lot of bad breaks on that hole. So the putter hasn't been working, but the driver has. I'll take this one and go on to the next one that I'll assess thoroughly. Okay, so 107, but I'm on this kind of funky downhill lie. I'm gonna take an extra club. Ah, I knew I was going to do that. It doesn't go my way, but I won't sweat it. Okay. Instead, I'll lean into my pitch and putt game. I hit a good one here and leave myself a makeable par putt. But spoiler alert, I don't make it. And now I'll reveal why I've ordered these holes out of sequence. No, oh, I pushed it. I'm showing you my worst nine holes of this round before showing my best. I hope it will demonstrate why I think about the game the way I do. So mine pitched here and... Wound up pretty good. On this hole, I have about 20 feet for birdie. That was a not good putt at all. A bad first putt, a bad second. So how are we going to break 80? We'll have to keep grinding. Indeed, when I string together footage of my nine worst holes, it does start to look ugly. That was a good drive, but this oh, go. is a weak approach shot, and it lands me in a greenside bunker. The effort out of the bunker gives me a look at par, but in as much as putting is usually my strength, it's unrealistic to expect every 15-footer to find the back of the hole. Mm. So it's another hole and another bogey. And here's a hole where we did all the things poorly. That was interesting. You know, very left. A stray drive and a stray approach. Even the greenside chip, which is usually another strength, leaves me with more than I'd like for a look at par. Thanks. And how about this? Oh, I pulled the hell out of it. It's a terrible putt and another bogey. We're eight over through that stretch of six holes. Oh, that's the wrong way. And there are bad holes to go. Greenside scrambling requires a deft touch. And I thought I'd done a good job with this one. Thanks. But watch it roll out. Yeah. I thought I gave it quite a bit, but... A 10-footer for par. Turn. Never turned. That's no good. After the hole, I guess. And we're on to nine over par. Onto a 440 yard par four. Oh, okay. Where my drive finds a bunker. Oh no, okay. This is an impossible hole anyway, so now it's definitely a par five. It's 202 flag, I'm just playing it out to the left. And from this fairway bunker, I have to play this par four as a three shot. Thanks. I'll have just a wedge in now, but I've really struggled to make clean contact with these. This one comes up short. Ooh, just a bit short. And I'll put even more pressure now on the flat stick. Stop. Luckily, I do all right, and this is a bogey that I'm okay with. Okay, that's a whole lot of squares on the card so far, but my ninth worst hole did indeed feature some magic. Oh, Adam. It wasn't on the approach shot, though. But here, greenside, I managed to get one to makeable range. Thank you. And finally, the golf gods give it. And that completes my worst nine holes. That was a good up and down. That one felt good. And we'll have a longer look at these stats at the end of the day. On to my best nine holes of the day. And unsurprisingly, they start with a good drive. 
I've got to aim at sort of the left corner of the trap, kind of. I'm still surveying each shot. Ugh. And even though this one hooks, there's a lot of time to make up for a poor shot on a par 5. I have a pitch into an elevated green here. Not quite, eh? And unfortunately, it gets held up by the fringe. But I put a confident stroke on this one. <laughs> Thank you. And let's Thank start you. erasing some of those bogeys. It's another smooth driver on this hole, and it will leave me just a gap wedge in. In fact, this is my favorite club and number, cultivated by playing over a thousand rounds of pitch and putt during my youth. I leave myself an uphill putt, and here goes. Bingo! It's a marked difference between my worst nine holes and best, and on this uphill par three, I fire a dart. So I guess this is gonna fall this way. Okay, trust the burn mark. We'll still give each putt respect, and this time, it pays off. Yes. I mentioned today's holes are out of sequence. It's certainly not common for me to card three consecutive birdies. So on to the remaining holes that featured mostly smooth sailing. A 250 yard drive on this par five effectively leaves me with just a 250 yard par four. And while my five wood can't get to this green, it does leave me with a number where I can get aggressive. The wedge leaves me with an uphiller for birdie. I leave it just a bit short and I'll settle for par. This was a tough uphill par three into wind. I opted for a 190 club that actually winds up over the back. And here I opt for the Texas wedge out of the Bermuda rough. I have to commit to a speed here and still putt with a confident stroke. I've committed to a line two and the whole group thinks it might go in. Oh. But it's not meant to be and I'll take a par. Oh no. I wasn't happy with this one, but downhill it goes 300. Okay, 155. We're into it a hair, it has to draw. Pins at the front. With the front pin position, I opt to miss long with this 165 club. Thank you. And it works out. I'll have about 15 feet for birdie here, and even though I don't quite get it to go, I'm always pleased escaping a 450 yarder with the par. Thanks. This was a perfect driver shape for this hole, and if you're wondering how I'm striking these drives better, I've been practicing what I preach and using swing tweaks, and you can check out the link in the description below for a discount on your first swing tweak. And I'm yep. hoping to have an eagle putt after this uphill approach, but instead I'll have just a short chip on. Not quite, eh? And this birdie putt should just be academic. Nope. But hey, Boy. I'm not a scratch golfer. Not today. Speaking of which... Oh, Adam. Go! Go! Something went right for me there, holy. In as much as we had nine holes of bad breaks, nope. on this one we got away with a poor tee shot and just a par. Not every drive is going to be a beauty. Where was that going? In fact, this one leaves me in maybe the worst spot I've been in all day. Oh. This isn't much better. Yeah, that was so bad. But when you're not a scratch golfer, sometimes you're left scrambling. I haven't done a great job at this today. Thanks. But here on what was actually the 16th hole, I get this one pretty close, and I'm able to knock it in. And how's that for a difference between my worst nine and best nine of the day? And I'll often review a scorecard at the end of the round to tabulate my worst and best nines. It gives me the motivation and mentality to prevail through the bad stretches of holes. And on a day that I shoot seven over, there are often still doubles or even worse on the card. The takeaway is to treat each shot with total indifference with regards to how the ball got there, and to treat every shot as a new opportunity to hit your best shot of the day.